think in the case of, of Ultrabooks, uh, I think Intel, um, you know, if you will, saw the writing on the wall, looked at things like, you know, MacBook Air, uh, which we were obviously intimately involved with, and, and uh, came to the conclusion that, you know, hey, this is, this is direction we need, you know, the whole industry to take. Uh, and and so stepped up and 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 really and, and really drove it and and that's you know personally that's the role I'd like to see Intel play more often uh, you know we did it back in the you know in 2003 and 2004 with Centrino uh, and you know and then I think we kind of sort of rested on our loyal laurels and coasted it. Um, we don't always play that role, and in fact, I'll, I'll give Asus particular credit around around netbooks. I don't think Intel was thinking netbooks when, well, I know Intel wasn't thinking netbooks when Atom was conceived, and even pretty late in you know in the Atom development, we weren't thinking netbooks. And and if you actually look at the original volume forecasts for Atom, they were way below what what came to be um, because you know a you know a company. Uh, Asus, in, in, you know, in particular, in that case, had a had a vision that went way, way beyond uh, Intel's vision. Looking out another, you know, kind of three, you know, three cycles. I think I think we're committed to uh, to TikTok uh, for the for the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. at least out to. Uh, you know, 2015, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, probably you know as far out as uh, as 2017. Well, I, I mean, it's hardly hardly a single corporation is in, is involved in keeping Moore's law alive. It takes it takes many, you know, many different companies to to make it possible. I think Intel probably. Uh, pushes the you know the semiconductor tool makers uh, harder than anybody because Intel uh, has been and expects to be at the at the leading edge of uh, of technology. But um, yeah, I think I think we um, we you know we're almost so so practiced at it uh, that we make it look easier. Uh, than it than it should be. I mean, you have to realize that we're actually we're actually doing the work two generations out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we you know we have pretty good good visibility and and so much so that we can decide. Gee, we're going to bring this module in, or we're going to push that module mm -hmm. uh, module out. Uh, and I would say, with the with the with the twenty two nanometer technology, the the three D Trigate uh, technology, uh, we it's almost as if we've opened a, a door to uh, you know to a whole new class of, of devices that have just haven't been possible when we were we were building transistors in the bulk. Mm -hmm. As we as we move now to build. Devices on the surface of the mm -hmm. of the silicon, uh, you know, uh, whole sections of the periodic table <laughs> open up to us. So I think it's it's creating lots of opportunities uh, for uh, both our device architects and our material scientists. Well, I, I think that that may be um, Intel's secret sauce. They may be the magic <laughs> that. Um, you know, uh, um, I mean, not picking on I IBM, but, uh, you know, IBM also talked about strain silicon for a long time, sure. uh, but, you know, but didn't bring it um, to market. Uh, Intel never talked about strain silicon, but brought it, brought it to market. And Intel, you know, made the transition to high K metal uh, and now to, you know, to, um, to Trigate, which is a, a FinFET class uh, device, mm -hmm. and so the I think maybe what what we have in, in a unique sense is is the ability to get beyond just the, the sort of the technical idea, and and uh, and get that idea into hot volume production, mm -hmm. right? And and that's what 
that's what stops, uh, I think, a lot of people, right? I mean, it's, I mean, as you said, you know, FinFets have been around for, you know, for a while. I, you know, I remember hearing about them 10 years ago. Yeah. But, you know, nobody brought them um, into production. I think Intel's genius here was figuring out how to build, uh, you know, FinFets in, in very high volume and get very high yields. I think from the product side, uh, you know, we have enough of a track record that uh, that we're very confident uh, that there'll be a technology at 14 nanometers, uh, and you know, and and so we don't worry about that. We worry more about what we're going to do with all those additional transistors. Well, by the way, it's not always it's not always obvious what you're going to do with those transistors and. And yes, we still debate endlessly, it seems, at times over exactly what we're going to do with those transistors, right? Are you going to build a bigger floating point unit or are you going to add a new security feature? I mean, literally, we've had debates like that and continue to have debates like that. And, and that debate is healthy. I'm not, I'm not criticizing the, the debate. You know, we should understand the value we get from, from all those transistors. <laughs> um, no, I don't think I don't think we're really driven off of a off of a wish uh, a wish list. I mean, uh, I think increasingly, actually, we're I think we're we're being driven largely um, by uh, market forces that are you know that are sort of beyond any any indi individual hardware vendor or, or or software vendor. And I think what what you're starting to see from Intel. It's much more focused on experience-driven uh, design, where you know we talk about the the kind of experience we, people want to have with a with a particular device, and I think you know you're going to see that in the Ultrabook, uh, which goes beyond any you know any individual vendor as we try to bring a lot of the device characteristics to the PC. Um, you know, people's expectations have been raised. Uh, with the convenience of smartphones and tablets, and they're asking why PCs don't behave the same way, why they don't turn on and turn off instantly, and why don't they, you know, find the appropriate communications networks with, you know, with little or no effort on the part of the uh, on the part of the user. Uh, I think DeepSafe, which was an Intel-developed technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we actually brought to McAfee before uh, we acquired McAfee, um, you know, as a as a business entity, um, is you know is exactly that kind of of technology. It's designed uh, differently than than uh, any existing antivirus, anti malware technology, in that it doesn't depend on signatures. So it's a true zero day defense. I mean, it will. Uh, it will stop, um, you know, a rootkit uh, attack, for example, uh, having never seen that uh, that particular instance. So even if you take, um, you know, a, a highly engineered attack, let's say Stuxnet, mm -hmm. um, and you know, do enough work on it to change the signature, DeepSafe will still detect it and stop it in a in a zero day uh, scenario.